Good evening and a warm welcome to you on this when we celebrate the fourth weekend of Advent. Just a word as we begin, please notice that there will not be Wednesday night services the day ahead of Christmas Eve, the 23rd of December that is, or again the day before New Year's Eve, December 30th. So no Wednesday services the 23rd or the 30th. Please uh, take your lessons and announcements home with you this, this week. That way you can remember in prayer all of those people who are listed in your bulletin. And with that, I invite the congregation please to rise for the brief order of confession and forgiveness. We gather now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, we read in 1 John chapter 3 that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sin and will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us now then silently confess our sins before God. And so together we pray, most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in His mercy has given His Son to die for us and for Jesus' sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by His authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated and join in singing our gathering song.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that would obstruct your mercy, that willingly we may bear your redeeming love to all the world. For you live and reign with the Holy Spirit and God the Father, one God, now and forever. Amen. This evening, I would invite you to please turn to the psalm on your insert and join me in a responsive prayer. The psalm tonight is a rendition of the Gospel of Luke. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is His name. His mercy is for those who fear Him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with His arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Amen. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee, Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But Mary was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends, Miss Renee is away with her uh, son, Anton. He's back from the Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland. But she sends greetings to you. And by way of by way of technology, she shares the homily with you tonight, which of course is based on the gospel lesson. Please be seated for Miss Renee's homily. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, the one who is full of surprises. Amen. Today's gospel text is the angel Gabriel coming and telling Mary that she will conceive a son and he will be the son of God, the Messiah. Wow, life is full of surprises and it certainly was for Mary on this day. What a shock it must have been for her when she heard this news. So today we will talk about three surprises life surprises, 
Mary's surprise and Christ's surprise. This year will certainly go into the record book of surprises, to say it politely. 2020 was a year of surprise. Last Christmas, we would have never guessed that we would spend an entire year or almost an entire year with what we have. Christmas time is also a time full of surprises, a time of joy, of, the, of gift giving and the surprise of, that comes with all of that. The joy and surprise when you meet family and friends and the excitement and laughter that comes in those times. Surprise begins from the very moment of having a baby, the moment of conceiving a child and the moment of getting to, to see your child for the very first time. That surprise that you bring when you play peekaboo with your, with your infant and the laughter and surprise that comes out of that child. Throughout life, we can reflect on those good and bad surprises that we have had in our life. Mary must have had the surprise of a lifetime when Angel Gabriel came and told her this news. Mary was only 13 years old. She was engaged to Joseph. She was of the working class population. She was an ordinary Galilean Jewish girl from Nazareth. Scripture tells us that when the angel Gabriel came and told Mary of the news, Mary was perplexed. I would tend to think that that is, would, was probably the understatement of the year for her. But if you notice, it's interesting what the angel Gabriel, how she responds to Mary, knowing that Mary is perplexed. In verse 30, you'll see that the angel Gabriel says to Mary, do not be afraid, Mary. The angel comforts her. The angel sends her a message of peace in the middle of of a scary, surprising time, the angel comes and gives her comfort. And then the angel goes on and tells her all that will happen to her and also tells her of her relative, Elizabeth, who is of an old age, is gonna have a baby as well in, in just a few months. So Mary has learned many surprising things but again, notice what the angel Gabriel says to Mary. She says, for nothing will be impossible with God. Again, the angel Gabriel reassures Mary of in a time where she is unsure, a time of, of fear, a time of wonder, and yet God sends a messenger to bring her comfort. Christ also surprises us. He comes to us in through a virgin, through through Mary, a regular ordinary person. He lives a life of serving people, serving people, not being served. And this is interesting when you think of the God of the universe coming to be human among us, and he is the one doing the serving. He is the one who has the heart for the marginalized. Christ surprises us. Christ surprises us in choosing us to be his children, in saving us from eternal death and the devil. He surprises us by dying on the cross in a really ex excruciating, horrible death for us. He surprises us by truly showing us who he is. 
by truly showing us that nothing is impossible with God. Life is full of surprises. This is true. And Christ is full of surprises. Surprises of forgiveness for you. Surprises of grace and love for you and surprises of eternal life that he has delivered just for you. And thanks be to God for that. Amen. Together as God's people, let us rise and confess our Christian faith by the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Oh, you can do better than that, can't you? The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share the sign of peace with one another. Please be seated as together we pray with one heart and voice. O oh Lord our God, you continue to surprise us and your work in the world is without cease. O Lord, as you sent your angel, Gabriel, to announce to Mary the wonderful good news that she was to bear a Savior, O Lord, so your angels announce again 
even in our own midst, that the Savior is in our presence too. O Lord, by His mercy and forgiveness, by the great sacrifice of Jesus' life, let our lives be made new and let our hearts be softened and opened to all Your love. Lord, in Your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask that the light of Your Son, Jesus, would shine brightly in our hearts and that our compassion would overflow for our neighbors, that in this time of Christmas, when we look and wait for our Savior to return yet again, our neighbors would know His love and mercy and kindness for them too. Lord, in Your mercy, hear our prayer. We call Your Son, Lord God, both the Good Shepherd and the Great Physician, and then are, there are many who are in need of His healing touch. O Lord, let Your Son's hands rest gently upon Tyler, Audrey, Dieter, and Daryl. Pour out also Your Spirit upon Diane, Glenda, Ron, and Naoma, and Stu. Stay close to the side of Dave, Jeff, Sharon, and Brayden. Remember all Your promises, Lord, for Dave, Jane, Shirley, and Robert. And give every blessing to Denise, Joyce, Christy, Nicholas, and Ken. O Lord, your children Lily and Walker and Cade and Dylan and Moni, they lift up their hearts to you. O Lord, fill their hearts with peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands now, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.